things are at least looking a little bit calmer here this morning so we're gonna get going in about an hour this is the first night since we've been in Minnesota that we haven't spent the entire night waking up like picking ticks off of us instead though we keep feeling tickles in like weird places and going oh oh check here check here I think we have a tick fortunately to keep us interested there have been the occasional mosquitoes getting into the room when we were getting ready for this trip, we both bought a new pair of mud boots per a suggestion we got from someone. Thank you to whoever that was, by the way. Really important suggestion. Um, Matt went for the fancy NRS boots that are designed specifically for uh, portaging or portaging. I guess we learned the uh, French Canadian pronunciation of that. Anyway, they're designed for this. Um, I went for the much more fashionable and also much cheaper pair of basic mud boots there. And uh, they have been a bit rough around my feet. Uh, as you can see, getting a little bit scraped up from walking around in those kind of abrasive. So that's the downside. But I still think it was uh, not worth it to get the fancy ones. Hey guys, guess whose feet are not bleeding? This place was really nice last night. I commented to Matt, this is about the least reluctant he's ever going to get me uh, going for a hotel stay. They were totally slammed on a Saturday night, but they got us in last minute. Normally I tend to be of the mind of why would you voluntarily be stuck inside when you could be outside um, in the freedom of nature off by yourself. But the last few nights have not been that kind of free, easy, relaxing camping. Um, take peeing, for example. Normally when you're camping, you can just pee, you know, wherever, whenever you want. Very easy. Uh, last few days has been more like, oh god, I really have to pee, but I'm gonna stay in the tent because I can't go out there. It's terrifying. Um, and so it was nice to get a break from constantly armoring up from the mosquitoes, constantly checking for ticks, and just kind of the stress that went along with that. I just want to capture this, our tick-free refuge, the only tick-free refuge in all of Minnesota. Do you, do you feel relaxed right now, Jeff? I do. Yeah, I, have, uh, I haven't felt a tickle in hours. Don't worry, they're probably all waiting in the boat. It's been sitting in the grass. And we're just making friends with the boaters. About to get on our way and things look more promising, though there is a breeze. And we are going to go try this again. So yesterday it was a little rougher, but it was basically, we got around that point, we got a couple of waves, we got around the next point, and all of a sudden we started really, really getting thrown, like we had some waves coming over the side, stuff like that. Today, um, we're thinking of changing our plan and going around the north side. Combination of yesterday, the waves were coming from that side, the winds look like they're coming from the same direction, per the forecasts that I don't really trust anymore. The marina also recommended that we might want to try uh, going around the north side. Those two other paddlers that we ran into, Jackie and Tom, uh, they came out yesterday. We warned them what we hit. They actually stayed past the campground on this side and set out this morning, so they're back ahead of us. We're just about five minutes into our journey around the lake, and we've already seen two little families of geese. Oh, they're too cute to be evil. No, they're not. Taters is oh god. <laughs> Taters is going to rob a train. Add she She is also uh, very excited about all the baby geese. I am very excited about the fact I am reasonably sure I have no ticks on me right now. <laughs> that is a first since entering Minnesota and getting out of the car at the headwaters. <laughs> and yes, this is looking like a far better day to be out on the lake. Uh, crossing across the middle would save us a couple of miles, but uh, obviously if something happened like yesterday, you can get into serious trouble if you're hours and hours in the middle. Um, so we're going to stick pretty close to the shore. That also gives us the ability to theoretically bail out if anything goes wrong, kind of like what we had done yesterday. <laughs> okay, now... Also, likely to see more baby geese that way, and maybe other baby animals. I don't know, I'm going to do it like this for the rest of the time and just go, run, run. <laughs> You should put yours on too. Then we can both be matching and have good sun protection. Jen, people have guns up here. If they think we're Somali pirates, they may shoot at us. <laughs> I have this big smiling face. I put sunscreen on. <laughs> Sun gets intense, I will use mine. So part of the reason we're going around the northern end is we're hoping once we are to the northern end of the lake, we'll get some protection from the wind. Really calm right here, but you can see the kind of chop out in the lake proper. 
and we're going, you know, skyline. So the waves aren't too bad here, but that's because we're in a little cove. We've been just working for hours, sometimes with waves almost big enough to come over the side of the canoe. It is really refreshing to be able to pull up to a beach and take a break rather than put on the mud boots and slog through knee deep mud and cattails to take a break. We have been paddling for about three and a half hours and we are about a third of the way around the lake. We are crossing our fingers that the wind is going to be treating us a little bit better once we make it to the actual North Shore. <laughs> Maybe won't be totally working against us at that point. <laughs> yeah, that, that happens. The weather just goes, oh look, it's masochist. Here, let's <laughs> if we can just get wind going like that way. <laughs> oh, yeah, then we can break out the sail and just fly across. Oh yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty tiring. But a lot better than if we tried to do it yesterday, huh? Yeah. Now this is more like it. If you're going to do an endless lake paddle, this is more what it should be like. And we're approaching the North Shore. So one of the really sweet things <laughs> that Matt does is he always tries to save animals like one time there were some fish that were trapped in a little pond that was going to dry up and he put them all in a trash bag and moved them to a safer spot carried them at like <laughs> seven thousand feet it was a lot of fun yeah and just now we took a break on the beach and he found this little caterpillar where the waves were coming in and it was gonna drown but he picked it up and moved it to safety i don't know maybe it swims like the jesus spider we found Oh, that was weird. That spider was way out in the middle of the lake. Hey, dude. So this is the kind of shoreline that we were really hoping for the other night when that big thunderstorm hit us and we dove for the trees. <laughs> Unfortunately there, it was all uh, cattail bog and we couldn't get anywhere near them. Also means that uh, trying to stealth camp out here has not really been an option. So far there's been enough camps, but there's been a few cases where it would be kind of nice to get a couple of miles if we knew that we could find some place to camp without causing major impact. And after coming roughly 200 degrees around the lake, <laughs> the wind was now uh, somewhat in our direction, so we broke out the canoe sail. We did? Yeah. <laughs> A very dubious idea. Well, it'd be fine. The wind just died when we got out. We used to paddling, so... And I don't know how to pack it away, so... <laughs> was this device a complete waste of money? <laughs> We'll see. I mean, nobody's going to run into this while we have this out. <laughs> we finally got some bright color on this boat. Yeah. yeah. So seriously, five minutes ago, we were fighting to keep the canoe straight as a strong northeastern wind was blowing. And the moment he got out the sail, completely calm. Pretty much. It's pretty much a wind killing device. But it is a cool color, as Matt said. Okay, so the sail is now furled. Unfurled. Unfurled. <laughs> the opposite of whatever she says. Um, Except I don't know why we're turning this way. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make sense. We should be turning the opposite way. <laughs> So right up there is the ending to this nearly endless lake. The goal is in sight. Oh, wait a second. We have some wind and waves again, but at least they're going in our direction. 
So we have been going with the waves instead of against the waves, but it, it's still been uh, knocking us around often. <laughs> when it gets really fun, we're not filming because otherwise we would dump over. Uh, we are both very much looking forward to getting off this lake. <laughs> so we finally made it across. It's about six o'clock. Uh, I've just been scouting around trying to figure out the portage because uh, this wasn't readily apparent. I mean, it works, but we were kind of dangerously close to that. So it looks like we come out, carry the boat uh, across the way there and uh, down past the uh, picnic area. Little known fact, I actually have uh, three arms, obviously, because look at all the things I've carried. <laughs> Then there's Blondie back there with her little girl bag. This is hard enough. <laughs> that, that's what he said. <laughs> I swear some of these portages exaggerate the uh, distance. This one said 770 yards. Step! Piece of cake ish. Just obnoxious. All right, shortly after 6 p.m., we made it across Lake. Winnipegosh, oh yeah. <laughs> so I think that means that the upper headwater hurdles are now at an end. <laughs> and we are back on a flowing river, cruising down uh, at least five miles to Crazy James <laughs> campsite. Are you the one that's saying we were gonna die in the Sock Rapids? Uh, oh, that's that's we got a while, Matt. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah, camming. So, <laughs> so we're at least going to make it five miles to Crazy James campsite. Now, if it looks like there's going to be dispersed camping options past that, we would love to do like about 10 more miles tonight. But the next established campground after the five mile one is in 16 miles. And I don't think we're making it that far tonight. So Tater's pulled scouting duty. Um, this is a marked camp. We're seeing what it has. Uh, we know uh, the other two people we met, Jackie and Tom, they're at the camp up ahead in another 16 miles. They said it's kind of like uh, the last one we were at where it's just a place to camp with low grass. Okay, Jen said this is the spot. Apparently it's pretty nice. Tall grass, ticks, an unfortunate amount of mosquitoes. Overgrown vegetation. This doesn't seem half bad. Other than uh, lots of mosquitoes. Damn it. And unfortunately, this is not unlike Stump. Or actually, it wasn't Stump. It was Smiling Joe's. Just as far as the number of mosquitoes who were buzzing around. At least we got a view. Oh yeah, if you squint through all the mosquitoes, you can kind of see water. It's, it's, it's above the ticks, below the mosquitoes, yeah. It's 9 p.m., sun is just starting to set over the Mississippi River, and we have a camp with a lovely view over the river all to ourselves. But today was kind of a tough day. That was a really, really long paddle across that lake. Uh, it was pretty, but we were both exhausted by the end of it, and it was like nine hours of just straight, full strength paddling ahead with the view not changing much. So that was pretty tiring. And then we get to another camp and we're just getting swarmed by mosquitoes yet again. Plus side, there doesn't seem to be that many ticks. We just found a couple of them, but it's, it's really wearing on us just not being able to sit out and have the freedom and relaxation that we normally do at camp. Uh, we are going to try and get some permethrin next time we go through town and hope that that makes it a little bit more livable out here. But uh, we're really hoping that the bugs aren't like this for the whole Mississippi River. So if anyone knows how we can expect the mosquito situation to change as we head down river, it'd be nice to have a thing to look forward to of they're gonna start getting better at some point. Anyway, home sweet home for the night. Okay, so the sail is now furled. Unfurled. Unfurled. <laughs> <laughs> the opposite of whatever she says. Um. <laughs>